The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. This is Dr. Richard Barwell, and I'd like to welcome you to Removing Interference Through a Successful Neurologically-Based Chiropractic Practice. Um, I have been and had the pleasure of friends and, and working with Dr. Bob Hoffman. He is president of the Master Circle. And this over the last several years, we've managed to put together some incredible programs. And I'm so pleased that uh, we were able to bring this together. When, when we talk about building practices, uh, the biggest challenge that we have is all setting new directions. With Dr. Hoffman as, uh, as coach and Dr. Dennis Perman as coach, these two have, have invested in this new future of chiropractic. And I really believe that this is truly the future of the profession. And so we know, I know we've got so much to cover in here, and it's just an honor to have Dr. Bob Hoffman come on board, and we'll talk about how to get some, some good advice and some good coaching as to how to build this successful NBC practice. Dr. Hoffman, are you there? I am. Thank you so much, Richard. Do you, do you want to just take it on from here, and I'll jump in as we go through? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure, and I certainly am very grateful and appreciative that so many of your, your clients and future clients have come on board for today's webinar. Um, the theme of today's webinar is removing the interference to a successful NBC practice, very similar to removing the interference neurologically when we take care of our patients. We know that when we remove the interference, we express far more of our potential. Now, I've had the distinct pleasure and honor of being a guest speaker at many um, trainings in Atlanta for NBC, um, where doctors are getting or learning how to utilize and um, how to interpret their neuroinfinity. Uh, I've also gotten to coach many of the doctors that were there or uh, after they left. And I have noticed that there are certain hang-ups, certain interferences, certain challenges that too great of a percentage seem to have. And that's what has created the, the context for today's class and today's webinar. What I really want to cover with you is now that you either have or are about to have this amazing technology to really determine the brain function or dysfunction of your patients with a stress response evaluation, once you have this technology to do neuro and biofeedback, how do we get this up and running in the office as quickly, as efficiently, as effectively as possible? And my observation is a large percentage of doctors do that, and unfortunately another large percentage of doctors don't. And I want to try to clear it up so almost 100% of the doctors do this and do this well. So let's, let's discuss some of the quick things, and then let's get into some of the psychology and coaching of this whole process. There are some major interference factors that we need to overcome. One of the things that I am so very impressed with with NBC is they fully engage you with this amazing wealth of information that you get even before you purchase your NeuroInfinity. And yet, many of the doctors don't open those documents, don't go through them, don't take the time to study them. I'm begging you to please download, read, review the training files, the marketing files, the educational files. This is your foundation. This is the information that you need to really get everything set up, to get your neuroinfinity out of the box, to know how to do your testing on the patients, how to begin to interpret, how to market yourself, the research behind it. This is where you get your certainty, your clinical confidence, your knowledge, your information base. Once your neuroinfinity arrives, make certain to schedule your call with Dee Dee as she will walk you through the entire startup process. Some people, I don't know if it's pride or, or what, but you know, they don't make that call. And they try to either do it on their own or they're not doing anything. And this is a huge problem. And it's so easy to, to prevent and, and eliminate. Just make an appointment. Speak with Dee Dee. She's very available and very helpful. She will walk you through the process and make this amazingly simple and easy for you. I'm also going to beg you to make it your goal and your plan to clear out your schedule, 
find out the dates of the next two NeuroInfinity training weekends and make sure that you're attending. Now, when you're attending, you know, some of you are solo doctors and you're going to attend solo. Some of you know in advance that there's a particular CA or two that will probably be doing most of your testing and most of your neuro and biofeedback. Even though it's an additional expense, bring them. Get them trained. Let them get hands-on training with the experts. This is how you rapidly and radically improve your learning curve so that by the time you get back to your office on Monday morning, you are proficient and organized and confident and could really start helping your patients with doing your, your stress response evaluation and using your neuroinfinity in a way that's very, very effective and extremely helpful. We, I believe put, we put together some, the, uh, power, <coughs> excuse me, the PowerPoints with voice recorded for people so that, and here's the thing, when, when we took a look at doing this, we put ourselves in the position of being the, the doctor in the office, and I, and I full remember, fully remember what it was like um, buying something for the office and then going back and trying to figure it out because there wasn't any support. That's not the way we did this. We have all the support in place for you, and you just have to listen to it. Go through the PowerPoints three and four times and just work your way slowly through it. Look at the materials that we've got in there for the advertising and the marketing. It's, it's all well prepared, and boy, you are, are just absolutely dead right. If people would just take the time to do that, it would solve most of their problems. You bet, you bet. But let's dig deeper, Richard, because there are some other issues that we need to resolve. You know, probably 80% of the issues would be resolved if people did all the things we just spoke about, but let's get that, the other part done as well. I believe that one of the keys in life and certainly one of the keys in growing a practice and one of the keys in implementing the neuroinfinity is getting comfortable being uncomfortable. That sounds like a nice throwaway line, but it really is so critical. Ultra successful people are uncommonly skilled at execution and implementation, even if they're uncomfortable. And this is what separates anyone in any profession. The successful people implement. They execute. They take action. The people who are struggling, they procrastinate. They put things off. They do things somewhat, but they don't complete the process. Ultra successful people are uncommonly skilled at execution and implementation. I kind of wish I could just brand that into your brain so you never forget it because it will change your life for all, forever. We know that one of the universal principles is the 2080 principle. 20% 20 always creates 80% of our results. Just to give you a couple of, of examples of this, 20% of the chiropractors attract 80% of the new patients. 20% of the vertebra will get 80% of your clinical results. 20% of your staff is going to get 80% of the work done. 20% of the hours you're open is when you see 80% of your visits. 20% of your procedures are going to generate 80% of your income. 20% of your patients refer in 80% of the referrals. A different 20% generate 80% of your stress. And I can go on and on and on. Here's the deal. Every chiropractic wellness practice could easily grow in today's environment if you focus on the 20% things that matter. The challenge is, is a lot of people aren't sure what are those 20% things and they become distracted. Relative to the neuroinfinity and relative to having an NBC style practice is that I'm going to cover in great depth with you the 20% things that will give you the 80% results so that you have rapid growth and practice transformation. I'm going to ask you not to be bitten by the curse of perfectionism. Look, I like perfect, perfect, but the reality is perfect doesn't always exist, and if we all wait to have this down perfect, you're never going to get started. So the reality of the situation is do as best you can, get as, as proficient as possible, but don't wait until you have it mastered before you start doing it because you're never going to get started. And successful people 
do what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, if they like it or not. And this is another critical psychological issue that we need to just address for a moment or two. Successful people just take care of what needs to be taken care of. They don't always like it. They don't always have the time for it. Somehow they make it happen. And in, for you to move forward with neuroinfinity and getting yourself set up and, and being able to begin to transform your practice, just take action. Take one step at a time confidently, and then the next step after that, start talking different, communicating different, having a slightly different intent, focusing on a different outcome, speaking a different language, running a different business model, uh, asking different case history questions, uh, doing different exams, adjusting differently. It requires change. Change isn't our enemy, it's our ally. So I believe that we need to have a minimalist view so that we can produce maximum results. And part of this is we need to recognize that less is more. We all get so caught up trying to do everything that inevitably we don't get to do very much. The fact of the matter is, is we're never going to have enough time to do everything, but we have to make the time to do the most important things. And this is part of the secret for us to shift away from being busy to become highly productive. Everyone is busy but only some people are highly productive. And obviously, it's the highly productive people that grow the fastest, have the greatest sense of joy and fulfillment, make the most money, do the most good. I want all the people listening to this to be in that category. So here are the 20% things. Here are the five things I believe we must always be focused on as we're going through this transformation. First is change the conversation and your intent. We're no longer trying to adjust a vertebral subluxation from an abnormal position back into a normal position to just relieve nerve pressure. It's a different conversation. Once you change the conversation, you're going to get a different breed of patient. Patients are going to come in for a whole different reason and far more exciting and far easier to help then my back slipped, could you just push it back? We've got to change the conversation. But changing the conversation, ladies and gentlemen, begins in your brain, in your consciousness, in your beliefs. You've got to get away from those old habits into the new habits of talking a different story. Look, I am very proud of being a subluxationist. I have educated my patients over and over about subluxation. So many good chiropractors do that day in and day out. We as a profession have done that for 119 years, and the truth is less than 10% of the population is buying our story. We need to have a new, improved, more understandable, more research-based, more comprehensible story than the story we've been telling for 119 years. That story was essential. That story got us to where we are today. But even though it was a huge asset for many, many decades, it's now turning into a detriment because it's no longer as accurate or as effective or believable by society. So we've got to change the conversation and intent. The second thing is we need to make chiropractic care a necessity and not a luxury. When people think that your care is a luxury, ugly things like time, distance, and money become a roadblock from them accepting your care. We need to make it that care is a necessity. I don't mean this to be arrogant or um, to, to be prejudiced in any way. I love going for massage myself. I get a massage at least every other week. But I think most people would consider massage a luxury. I don't think anybody with a heart condition would think of going to their cardiologist as a luxury. It's a necessity. We need to elevate first in ourselves and absolutely in our patients, our staff, our community, that what you do is a life and death issue. It's a necessity. People have chronic, severe, and degenerative conditions in their nervous system and in their brain, and if you don't help them, 
quite frankly, nobody else probably will. We set these people up on a terrible path of deterioration and damage and disease. And we need to position ourselves with far more seriousness. I've noticed, because I get to listen to a lot of reporter findings in my coaching um, time, and the reality is so many chiropractors are such nice, good people that we accidentally sabotage our relationship at the very beginning by sugarcoating our recommendations. Oh, Mr. Thompson, you have a garden variety type of spinal problem. It's relatively easy to fix. I fix these problems all day long. You know what the patient hears? The patient hears, thank God there's nothing seriously wrong. And immediately they see you as a luxury, excuse me, as, in this, as a luxury and not as a necessity. The third thing we need to focus on is establishing winning neurologically based chiropractic habits. Now I'm going to go into each of these five um, topics in far more detail in a moment, but there are specific habits of success in an NBC practice. Learn what those habits are. Commit to those habits. Do those habits every single day. Replace some of your old habits that are holding you back with these new habits that will move you forward. Number four is generating income with your neuroinfinity. You either already have or are about to make a significant investment. It's an investment, not a cost, by the way. It's very simple to recoup that investment. It's very simple to turn that investment into a huge profit center. But you've got to know how to do that. And we need to talk about that. And we need to go into that as soon as we possibly can. How do we generate income as the side effect of services well rendered to our patients because we believe in every cell of our being that the patient needs these services and we should be paid and paid properly for them. And number five is we must consistently produce the great clinical outcomes that we're capable of. We need to make promises and deliver on the promises. We need to recognize that at the end of the day, our clinical outcomes will help us produce our personal incomes. And we need to find ways to not overpromise, but to feel confident and certain and to generate great clinical results, not by tr tracing down or tracking down the symptoms, but by changing what the relationship with the patient is in the first place. You know, one of my many mentors taught me many years ago that if the patient accepts you as their doctor based on the fact that they believe you're going to get rid of their symptoms, only two possible things could occur, and both of them are not good. Their symptoms either go away and they go away, or their symptoms fail to go away and they go away anyway. Either way, they've robbed themselves, they've robbed you, and they've robbed chiropractic of producing yet another miracle. So we need to set up our relationship, our sustainable long-term relationship with the patient based on something other than their symptoms. This is the whole consciousness of transforming practice from pain to brain. And we need to go into that in great detail. So let's, let's dig into these topics a little bit more. Changing the conversation and intent. We need to recognize, ladies and gentlemen, that we're in the early stages of the worst epidemic in, in history, the neurologic epidemic. More and more people in ever-growing numbers are coming down with, that's the medical term, the street term, they're coming down with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and autism and attention deficit and post-traumatic stress disorder and fibromyalgia and irritable bowel syndrome and insomnia and lupus and multiple sclerosis, and the list goes on and on and on. These are all neurological problems. And quite frankly, it's in this world that medicine really doesn't have very many answers at all. And people are suffering in ever-growing numbers, and they're looking for solutions. And as bad as this is for society and for people who have these conditions, it is a gigantic window of opportunity for you to step in because you do have the answers to this neurologic epidemic. We need to recognize that everyone, no one is immune. No one is excluded. Everyone has constant, chronic, low levels of stress causing a sympathetic, parasympathetic imbalance. 
this issue of a sympathetic parasympathetic imbalance has been known by medical science for over a hundred years. The most famous and preeminent physiologist of his day was Walter Cannon. He was the head of the physiology department at Harvard for decades. He wrote a famous book called The Wisdom of the Body. He coined the terms fight flight and homeostasis. And in the very early 1920s, he stated that the cause of disease is an imbalance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, that people's sympathetic nervous system is completely out of balance, and that's what sets us into a disease state. Thirty years later, Hans Selye, who is considered the father of stress research, wrote another best-selling book called The Stress of Life. And Hans Selye said it's unresolved stress that causes a sympathetic, parasympathetic imbalance, and it's the cause of all physical and emotional disease. So we've known this forever. I'm giving you two um, icons in this world, but there are literally thousands of papers out there, research papers, over the last 100 years, certainly over the last 20 years, that document this. In our chiropractic history, Dee Dee Palmer taught us about the three T's, thoughts, traumas, and toxins, other, otherwise known as physical, chemical, and emotional stress. The truth is, they're all prevalent. They're all important. They all cause disease and damage. But the one that is the most common, the most devastating, and the most overlooked is emotional stress. You know, there are so many subdivisions. Uh, money, time, relationships, health, traffic, deadlines, all of these stresses are constant, chronic, low levels of stress that are causing the sympathetics to fire, which is normal and natural and innately driven. But what's equally normal, natural, and innately driven is that once the stress is over, the sympathetics calm down, the parasympathetics kick in, and we go back into a state of balance. In today's world, that's not happening anymore. We're constantly trapped in this sympathetic survival syndrome because there's constant, chronic, low levels of stress keeping us in that hyper state. Let's recognize that your sympathetics are for survival, but your parasympathetics are for healing. Now, the two of these are supposed to be in balance, so we're surviving and healing at the same time. But when we're trapped in a sympathetic survival syndrome, we're constantly in a survival state, and our ability to heal, to grow, to learn, to flourish is greatly diminished. Now, this is part of the language that you need to be using as you start communicating with your patients. It's okay to say to them that the autonomic nervous system is made up of the sympathetics and the parasympathetics. One part of the nervous system is about survival, and the other part is about healing. Stress causes us to always be in survival, which is necessary to survive in the moment, but unfortunately blocks our ability to heal. We need to recognize that when the brain goes out of balance, when the sympathetics and parasympathetics are out of balance, the body always follows. We call this sickness and disease. Now what's confusing here, and you actually have to communicate this to your patients, is the confusion is when the brain goes out of balance, the body always follows, but what we call it depends on where the weak link in the patient is. In one person, that may show up as eczema. Somebody else, it may be low back pain. Somebody else, it might be high blood pressure. Somebody else, it may be insomnia. Someone else, it may be digestive problems. But it's all coming from the same place. And what medicine has done is tried to treat each of the end result instead of correcting the cause. I like to uh, love to have told my patients, I care how you feel. I'm going to do everything in my power to help you feel better. But my primary function is to help you function better. And we need to explain this. Roger Sperry in his Nobel Prize research, he told us that the spine is the motor that drives the brain. Now this is important. It's, it, this is the critical link for us because when the spine has aberrant motion because it's subluxated and stuck, it causes aberrant messages to the brain. And, and it goes both ways, by the way. 
So Sperry said that the spine is the motor that drives the brain. He went on to say that 90% of the, um, the nutrition and the uh, um, function of the brain comes from the movement of the spine. So obviously these two entities are so important. I believe that the spine is the best reflection of brain function and it also is the best gateway to improve brain function. Very, very important. We need to start to communicate that the adjustment is something different than what we've been saying for 119 years. The adjustment normalizes and maximizes brain function. You're going to be able to document that every day in your clinic with the neuroinfinity. That's why this is such a critical and essential tool. The adjustment reboots the brain. It puts it back into a normal and maximized function. And if we can keep it in that state or improve it into that state, the body heals because the body is a reflection of brain function. Number two, making chiropractic care a necessity. Again, we need to make an essential shift, first within ourselves, then with our team, then with our patients, and then with the community, from pain-based practice to a brain-based practice. And I think one of the critical issues here is what Richard and I both refer to as your declaration of intent. Listen, when you go through a case history with a patient and you start asking them about their symptoms, which you need to do. We're not opposed to that in any shape, manner, or form. And you say to the patient, tell me about your headaches. How often do you get your headaches? When did your headaches start? When are they at their worst? What have you tried to do to correct them? When you ask all of those questions we've all been trained to ask about their headaches, this patient naturally and normally has been trained to believe that they are now establishing a relationship with you based on their headaches and based on the belief that you're going to help them with their headaches. So there needs to be a statement that we refer to as the declaration of intent that changes the trajectory of this relationship. So it's a statement like this. I'm giving you one example. There are dozens. Mrs. Smith, now that you told me everything about your headaches, you have my empathy and my attention. I feel so terrible that you've had this problem for all these many years with no relief. You have my word. I'm going to do whatever I can to help you get rid of this problem once and for all, naturally, forever. But I must tell you that how I've established an excellent reputation is not just treating people's symptoms. It's getting people past how they feel to make sure that they once again function properly. And in our clinic, what we do is care does not end when your headaches go away. Quite frankly, that's when it really begins. We need to make sure that your brain and your nervous system are balanced, they're in harmony, they're communicating properly, that when stress happens, your, your brain handles it and, and um, neutralizes it properly so it doesn't cause sickness and disease. See, there has to be a shift in the relationship right up front your declaration of intent does that. We need to have ongoing patient education. Your table talk, you can't make mistakes based on the old world and walk over to the next patient on the next table and say something like, so how are you today? Because they'll tell you, and that is a symptom-based practice again. You have to come out with positive statements. You've got to lead the relationship. Let me see the effects of stress on your body and your brain today, Mrs. Smith. You know, there are different things we can say, should say, in order to, again, be consistent and congruent with this new relationship and this new intent. Overcoming the damaging effects of constant chronic low levels of stress and the sympathetic survival syndrome that you're in. That's got to be the theme, the basic theme of everything we think, say, and do in practice every day with every patient. Chiropractic care is the natural reboot for the brain and the nervous system. You know, I use a computer all day long. Fortunately, it works great 99% of the time. Every once in a while, my computer gets sluggish or it freezes. I don't have any idea how it does this. All I know is I hit the Control, Alt, Delete key, and my computer reboots, and it's perfectly working again. That reboot 
for the central nervous system is an ADJ. When you adjust people properly, effectively, based on what you learn with the neuroinfinity, and we'll get into this in a few moments, that's when we produce the best and most efficient results. I'm stuck on my slide. I apologize. Why is it not letting me advance? <laughs> Any idea, anyone? <laughs> Can you advance it now? Let's see. There, there we go. Okay. Richard, you just had to open up your your brilliant mind and it started to work. Thank you. <laughs> I I apologize for that technical er error. So let's go to number. Well, you three. were just talking about your computer not working, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. But I didn't have an opportunity to reboot. I I had to fix it on the fly. <laughs> so let's talk about establishing winning neurologically based chiropractic habits. There's a new consultation with new questions that we need to ask. We can't just ask about their problem. There are so many powerful questions out there. Where in your body do you currently hold and carry your stress? What a sensational question to ask. What's so phenomenal about this question is first, everybody has an answer. Some people say my jaw, some say my neck, some say my lower back, some say my stomach, some say my chest. I do want to know what their answer is, but that is not the purpose of asking this question. This question is about changing the trajectory of the relationship because once the patient says, where do you hold or carry your stress, and they say, in my shoulder, my right shoulder, A, they're acknowledging that they're under stress, which is important because so many of us are under stress so often, so long, for so many years that we think it's normal. And second, for probably the first time in their life, they're making the cognition that, oh my God, it is affecting my body. So we have to ask these better questions. The quality of our life is driven by the quality of the questions we ask. So another question is, why do you think your body has failed to heal itself this time? Another great question is, did you know that science refers to the brain and nerve system as the master control system. See, every one of these questions, and I have dozens of them, so many of the doctors I'm coaching are completely redoing their entire case history form. We ask questions to change the purpose of the visit, to change the relationship. Very, very important. We need to do a new exam. Your new exam is primarily, if not exclusively, your stress response evaluation. It tells you so much about what's going on that the patient may or may not have any awareness of. It tells us which type of brain dysfunction is occurring with this patient. How are they adapting or failing to adapt to their stress? What kind of condition is their autonomic nervous system in? So it's a whole new test. We can't do tests that are pain related anymore. There needs to be a new report of findings with a new care plan schedule. You know, your report of findings is the visit that defines us. This is where we make or break our relationship with this patient. We need to know how to do a, a world-class report of findings based on the things we know best and how to communicate that in the most effective way to the patient. And that has to include your care plan. Dr. Barwell has led a, a tremendous movement in the chiropractic profession about frequency, duration, and intensity, and based on that as well as which one of the four brain dysfunctions, over-aroused, under-aroused, unstable, or exhausted, how you manage and put together a care plan that's customized and unique for this particular patient. We need to master that. There needs to be new adjusting protocols to produce the best possible results. This is another winning NBC habit. Let's recognize 
that it's the cranium, the upper cervical spine, and the sacrum that when we adjust them, it stimulates parasympathetic function. When we adjust the lumbars, thoracics, and lower cervicals, we're stimulating sympathetic function. Recognize that at least 90% of your patients are in sympathetic overdrive. We don't want to stimulate sympathetic function. So how we adjust, where we adjust, how much force we use, how do we modulate our force, how frequently we see the patient. All of these, this is the first time in 119 years in chiropractic that we have answers for instead of us creating a schedule based on our strengths or our weaknesses, based on our testosterone or estrogen. Now we have protocols. We need to follow them. And we already talked about the new conversation and the new educational process. Every visit, we need to have a conversation or enhance the conversation or go back to the conversation about how stress causes a sympathetic parasympathetic imbalance. When the brain's out of balance, the body always follows. We call this sickness and disease. The adjustments get your brain back into balance. When the brain goes back into balance, the body always follows. We call this healing. This is how we've established an excellent reputation. This is why such a wide range of clinical problems respond so beautifully to the care we offer, offer right here in this office. See, these are new habits. We can't try to keep one foot in the new world and one foot in the old world. It's incongruent and confusing. We've got to make the transformation. And once you do, you will be so much happier You'll get such better results, better retention, better referrals. You'll never want to go back, but you've got to make that leap of faith. Number four, generating income with your neuroinfinity. We talked about this earlier. Well, you have your initial SRE that you need to do, depending on where you are, in a big city, little town. You know, most doctors are charging somewhere in the neighborhood of about $195 to $275 for that initial SRE. That's a very healthy and responsible amount of money to charge for that test. There's follow-up SREs. Uh, Richard, I believe you teach every 90 days. I know some doctors are doing 60 days, but that's probably the, the ideal range of time. The follow-up SREs don't take quite as long as the initial one because you're not explaining everything. So doctors are charging a little bit less for the follow-ups, but that generates income. Using your bio chart, this is part of the new world. Let patients self-diagnose themselves at the case history. This should be one of your case history forms so that they could see that they're in over-aroused brain. They have a brain dysfunction, that all these symptoms are related to the same issue. And when people start using that bio chart, it makes so much sense to them that you're going to generate more referrals, you're going to generate better retention. Both of those generate more income. A big thing that people miss out on is only a small percentage of the people with the neuroinfinity that I speak to are using neuro and biofeedback regularly. I'm going to beg you to think in terms of a dentist. When you go to a dentist, there's the dentist, him or herself, and a dental hygienist. They're both working all day. They're both helping patients all day. They're both generating income all day. Well, the dental hygienist is the CA generating neuro and biofeedback all day long. 100% of your patients probably need this. Conservatively, 80% of your patients need this. This should be going on all day long. Now, biofeedback takes only 10 to 15 minutes on a session, where neurofeedback takes a little bit longer, maybe 20 to 30 minutes. You get to charge whatever is usual and customary in your area. But from what I hear, most doctors are charging about $30 for biofeedback, about $50, $55 for neurofeedback. But if this is going on all day long by your CA, it will produce better clinical outcomes, better retention, better referrals, and generating income all day long. We all know that part of this new movement into neurologically based chiropractic, we're using the MindFit. Honest to God truth, I use my MindFit at 8 o'clock this morning. I use it four or five times a week. It's a phenomenal way in addition to our chiropractic care to help reset, rebalance the brain, reprogram the brain and the nervous system so that it's functioning at peak performance. 
and it should be generating income. We don't charge for an individual MindFit session. We charge for a package of sessions. You should be recommending this at your report of findings in addition to your package of chiropractic adjustments and your package of neuro and biofeedback. There should be a package of all three, and it should be very profitable. Ret better retention and better compliance generates more income. And I believe that we need to get bold enough to start teaching stress workshops to our patients and to our community. There is so much information about this. It's easy to teach. Put together a three or four hour workshop, an hour a week for two or three or four weeks in a row. Charge a fee for this. Do some practical demonstrations with it. Let people try the mindset during it or show them neuro and biofeedback or whatever it is that resonates with you. But this also should be producing income. Great clinical outcomes. Customized care based on individual brain dysfunction will improve your outcomes significantly no matter how great they already are. I touched on, on Dr. Barwell's um, work on frequency, duration, and intensity. How frequently we see the patient, how many areas of the spine we adjust, how much force or non-force we use is determined by their individual brain dysfunction. We need to be neutralizing and erasing stress with your adjustments, with MindFit, with our education system. And by the way, there are dozens of other things that fall into this category that are a huge help to you as well. As I stated earlier, your primary, not your exclusive, but your primary focus on probably 90% of your patients is cranium, upper cervical, and sacrum. Chiropractic adjustments create a functional reorganization in the brain and make the connection between the cells far more robust. The chiropractic adjustment properly delivered interrupts the current inappropriate neurological patterns that is going on in that patient's brain and in their heart day by day, causing them to be in a sick and diseased state. It's so easy to produce phenomenal results in practice. Even though we didn't know a lot of this, chiropractic Chiropractic is where it is today, 119 years later, because we've produced miracles for 119 years. Imagine how much better, faster, and more sustainable the miracles could be if we could refine the process even further, and now we have a method to do that. I believe we've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. All growth occurs at the end of your comfort zone. I know for some of you this looks easy, for some of you this seems overwhelming, but get comfortable with it. Chop it down and chunk it down to bite-sized pieces. Take one step at a time, but just take a new step every day. Don't procrastinate. Don't put things off. Make change your ally, not your enemy, and adapt. Remember that part of the philosophy of chiropractic is about adapting. When we adapt to our internal and external stresses, we're in a state of ease. When we fail to adapt, we're in a state of dis-ease. If we continue to fail to adapt, we get to a state of disease. This is just as true for your body as it is for your business. Gain clarity with your neuroinfinity by practicing and role-playing initially with your staff, your family, and friends. Do three or four or five or six or eight tests. Neuro, um, stress response evaluation on family, friends, and staff until you feel a sense of comfort or more comfortable. Where do I place the sensors? How do I set the system up? How do I interpret the results? And then begin to schedule your patients. Plan a week in advance. If I'm going to start to test my family and friends and staff this week, schedule yourself for five or six or eight of those. Next week, schedule your patients and dive in. You'll be amazed how quickly your confidence level soars, you feel and are more proficient, and the patient has no idea if this is the first real test you've ever done or you've done a 1,000 before. Show up as the expert with confidence. Talk different. Be different. Make your intent different, and I promise you, you'll produce different and better results. It's essential to transform yourself first and your practice will follow. In the master circle, one of our core tenets is that personal growth always precedes practice growth. That who you are determines how well whatever it is you do works. 
And we've got to recognize that personal growth is at the heart of this whole issue. It's an identity issue. We need to make sure that you feel more comfortable and confident and proficient with this transition to neurologically based chiropractic. You realize how amazing of a tool the neuroinfinity is and the biochart and all the other things that NBC gives to you that we talked about earlier. I'm going to beg you to have a powerful enough why. You got to understand that patients don't buy what you do. They only buy why you do it. They don't care how you adjust them or how you analyze them or they don't care about any of that. They want to know why you do it. And you need to be crystal clear why. What we do changes over time. This is a change. This is a transformation. But why we do it never changes. And we need to realize that why we adjust people is so that they can raise consciousness and express more of the greatness that they have inside of them. We need to recognize that this is a bigger game. You were chosen to be a chiropractor. You, weren't, you didn't decide on it. It chose you. And we need to recognize that once we realize that we've been chosen, we weren't chosen to play small. I love this quote. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I'm wise, so I'm changing myself. This is about changing you, and then your whole world will change from that. And I love this statement. There are two great days in a person's life, the day you were born and the day you find out why. If you don't have crystal clear clarity on why you're a chiropractor, get it. Get it from speaking to a mentor or a guide, a hero, a coach, somebody who can help get, give you clarity about that, or just listen to that inner voice inside of yourself, but get why. So I hope this information was helpful. I'd be more than happy to open it up for questions and answers or comments from you, Richard. But first, I want to just state, feel free. I'm begging you to email me. My email is bob at themasterscircle.net. You can always call me at 800-451-4514. And there's a few reasons to contact me. First, I'd love to hear what you thought about today's webinar. Second, if there's anything I can help you to proceed and move forward with your neuroinfinity and neurologically based chiropractic, I'd be happy to. But I'd also love you to schedule with me a no-cost, no-obligation practice evaluation so I can show you what it takes, what your 20% things are to grow your practice. Some of you know that you need a coach or are looking for a coach. You know you need help and guidance and someone to hold you more accountable. If you would like to coach with me, I'm the only neurologically based chiropractic coach in the profession today. I wish that weren't the case, but it is. So if you're looking for that, please let me know. I'd love to work with you and help you. I'm sure Richard will be able to attest to this, but those people who got a neuroinfinity, who came to at least two trainings with the neuroinfinity and are coaching with me are growing at a much faster rate than people who are not coaching. I also have 57 hours of professionally recorded audio training on this entire subject. Today we went through about 50 minutes worth. I have 57 hours of that material. It's audio. It could be emailed to you. You could purchase pieces of it. You can purchase major chunks of it. You could purchase the entire thing. I'm more than happy to get that information to you show you what op your options are, and if you're interested, go forth with it. But you would need to email me or call me, bob at themastercircle.net or 800-451-4514, so I can get that to you. And finally, I'd love you to attend the Master Circle seminar as a guest and discover for yourself what we teach, how important it is, how interactive it is, how inspirational it is. Richard himself has spoken, I think, at almost every Master Circle seminar for the last few years as one of many speakers. And the fact is our seminars really inspire people but give them the practical tools to take their life and their practice to the next level rapidly and quickly. So again, I hope you enjoyed, and I'd be more than happy to answer and respond to any feedback or comments or questions. Thank you. Great stuff, Bob. Thank you very much. Uh Folks, I've I got to tell you, uh, my relationship with the Master Circle and with Dr. Hoffman 
has been incredible. He was one of the very few of the leaders in this profession <coughs> that stopped, excuse me, <coughs> stopped and actually listened to what I was saying to him and saw the big picture and said, oh my gosh, this is what we have to be doing. So my hat's off to, to the presentation he just did and to the quality of the Master Circle coaching. Uh, like you said, I've been at uh, the last two years at every, practically every one of these, and the quality of the people involved, I can tell you, they are just the cream of the crop in the profession. So this is a, a great opportunity to get involved and, and find out what a good coach can do for you. I, I know that I couldn't have done a, my practice without a, a coach, and there's nobody with a higher quality than the Master Circle for the profession. Uh, I just want to make one comment on, on the Declaration of Intent, and, and this is something that I, I, it's me so much about intent, 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 and it's all about answering the one question of why, why you do what you do, and we, go, we need to go back and say about chiropractic, the intent of chiropractic. Why do we do chiropractic? If from day one, and this has never changed, and it doesn't change with neurologically based chiropractic, versus vertebral subluxation based, the intent of chiropractic has always been to remove interference to ideal neurological function. That's been our bottom line. Now, the problem is we got confused between how we did this and why we do it. And we started to look, look at adjusting vertebral subluxations and we started calling that chiropractic. And that was never it, that was how we did it. And so those issues are so critical to get through your head to be able to advance the profession. And I think you got a lot of that today, at least I hope you did. Let's see if there's any comments, anybody that would like to join in and maybe ask a question or make a comment about this. And thank you for your time and effort today. I know you're a very busy man. I appreciate what you do for the profession. Um, if you have any questions for Dr. Bob or for Dr. Barwell, just raise your hand through the control panel and I can unmute you and therefore you can speak to them directly. If you don't have a microphone uh, for your computer, you can type your question in and I will read it out and these guys can chime in on it. Um, I do have one, guys, and it basically says, um, I guess addressed to you, Dr. Barwell. My rescans show the limbic system changes as early as three months, but lagging changes to the brain wave. If our message conversation is the brain leads the body, how do we reconcile this upon the re-exam? The, the limbic system is part of the brain. It's the most reactive portion of the brain, and you're going to see the changes in there first of all. First off, the, the problem is is that the hard wiring experiences are in that cortical area, that the EEG patterns that we're seeing. And so that's why we need to have people, and this is finally we have justification for people to stay under care long before we change, make the changes in that limbic system responses. You know, and, and even that's an advancement because pain goes away and we're still not seeing the changes in the limbic system response until all of a sudden finally we start to see the limbic system responding. Now we've, we've gone past where just pain relief, but now we can, we've got the justification to say, great, you're doing super, you're, it's, we're changing that central nervous system, now we have to continue to address what's driving those, those uh, hardwired patterns in there. So that's exactly what it should be doing. You should see the responses at the limbic system first. I hope that answered the question. I think so. We have one more question. Dr. Durham? Dr. Durham, are you there? You may not have a mic. It looks like he does. His hand's raised. Dr. Matt, if you can't, we can't hear you. If you can uh, type the question in, possibly. While you're doing that and typing it in, I just I want to talk again about intent for a moment. I intent. The clearer you are in your intent, the more it will create passion in your life. And when you create passion in your life, it drives commitment. And that's, that's where you're going to start the search for excellence in everything that you do based on what is your intent and becoming very clear on it. I, I have so much fun working with, with Dr. Hoffman and the Master Circle because we've gone through all the experiences and we've done coaching for years and we know where these problems lie with people. And, and it's so nice to hear him cover areas that I'm going like, oh, that's great stuff. <laughs> I wish I thought of that. <laughs> but you get both of us. So it's, it's been a lot of fun doing it. And so Dr. Hoffman, it's been a joy. Thank you. Uh, did you come up with a question? Uh, no. Hold on one second. Okay. There's another one. Okay. 
Uh, Dr. Haywish would like to uh, get more information on how to determine the frequency, duration, and intensity based on the SRE in the biochar. Um, that's going to be, uh, we'll, we can go over that. As a matter of fact, I think we do have a PowerPoint presentation on talking on that. We, I'm pretty sure we've done that, so we should have that. That It's not a simple little answer because you have to look at how many areas of the, the stress response evaluation are involved. Um, you, you look at the cortical area, that's your primary, and then if there's only one level of, of uh, problems being generated in the limbic system, that's, that says, well, we should get fairly quick responses on this. If there's six different problems and uh, the person's on medications, I always count the medications as, as two challenges to the, the nervous system, so that's going to take longer. So uh, we go over that again at the training. And it, I come on back to the training. We'll cover it there, but I do believe we have a PowerPoint presentation on that. We have, we've tried to, to put all of these things into PowerPoints so that you can access them in your own office and go over them and over them and over them. Um, maybe Didi can take a look and see if we've got that one. <laughs> we, we do. It's actually in part of the files that I send out initially. So, Dr. Haywish, if you have a challenge finding that, just call me and I'll let you know where it's located. Super. Anything else? Any more questions, guys? I'm getting a lot of uh, people typing in, thank you, great webinar, great information. Thank you guys so much for doing this for us. So uh, I, I think it was a success. I think we will say, um, um, and I know it's Thanksgiving time, and I'm very, very thankful for uh, not only being a chiropractor, but the friendships that I've developed through this profession. Uh, I rank Dr. Hoffman way up there in, in that list. So thank you very much for all you've done. I, I, I totally respect, admire, and love you for what you do. and where you've led the profession, being out front, taking the hits, <laughs> and um, starting a, as the point, and but now you've got a whole team behind you and a lot of other colleagues behind you, and you should be immensely proud. So I thank you. Great stuff. We'll talk to you somewhere down the road then. Um, thank you very much for listening. And just one more comment, there are some people who came on late and some people who had to leave early, so I did record the webinar and I will be sending it out to clients. Fabulous. All right, bye for now.